Hello and welcome to another edition of Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, Public Information Director for the Morris County Government. Focus on Morris County is a program that's designed to keep us up to date on the actions that are being taken by the Morris County Board of Freeholders. And the show is also intended to make us all more aware of the many aspects of Morris County government. For example, on this segment of the program, we are going to learn about Morris View Healthcare Center, and in particular, a new subacute unit that's opened up at Morris View. And here to detail that new facility are my guests. First to my left is Kathy Engler. Kathy is the administrator of Morris View Healthcare Center. And seated next to Kathy is Frank Pinto. Frank is the director of the Morris County Department of Human Services. Folks, welcome to the nice program. To you, Pleasure Thanks, to have Sam. you here. Uh, Frank, I, I want to start with you. Before we get to the subacute unit uh, and Morris View, talk a little bit about the Department of Human Services and some of the various divisions and services that it offers. Certainly, Joe. Yeah, there's a wide variety of services and divisions within the Department of Human Services. Uh, the Office of Temporary Assistance uh, provides all of the welfare, food stamp, and uh, emergency assistance programs, the safety net for folks that, uh, that need, those, uh, need that assistance. We also have the Juvenile Detention Center and Youth Shelter as part of uh, the Department of Human Services. Behavioral Health and Youth Services, uh, a lot of the uh, programs there for addiction services and all are administered uh, throughout the Department of Human Services. We also have the D Division of Aging, Disabilities, and Veterans. Um, in addition, we have employment and training services, and uh, one of the largest divisions is the uh, Morris Health Healthcare Center. It's all part of the entire Department of uh, Human Services. Kathy, I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. If you would give us a little overview of the Morris View Healthcare Center. Sure. Morris View is a 283 bed facility that um, c considers lots of services within such as subacute, such as respite and hospice. Um, it is a, a large facility um, with uh, a beautiful atrium and uh, wonderful grounds that the residents can um, partake in. Now, many of our viewers, Kathy, may be familiar with Mars View as simply a long-term care facility, uh, a nursing home. Over the years, though, the facility has evolved, has it not? What are some of the services that have been added over the years, and how did this all come about? Well, many nursing homes is strictly custodial care. Um, about four and a half years ago, we changed the name, actually, to make it a broader sense of services into uh, Morris View Healthcare Center. Um, we do provide other services than custodial nursing home care, such as respite, uh, for people that, uh, caretakers that um, want to take a little break from uh, their loved ones and take a vacation, um, and hospice care mm -hmm. for end of life palliative and comfort care. Now, we mentioned at the beginning of the, of the show that uh, a new subacute unit has opened at Morris View Healthcare Center. Kathy, what exactly is a subacute unit? A subacute unit is a short term rehabilitation unit that provides care for any illness or injury uh, that somebody may have, have uh, somebody happened to them. Um, it's short term with a discharge plan to home, um, providing uh, pretty aggressive uh, therapy services. Frank, um, I understand that there have been some changes made in uh, Medicare uh, and Medicaid payments that impact Morris View Healthcare Center. What can you tell us about that? Well, there's there's a couple of things that have uh, that have gone on and that are that are still continuing to change within the state of New Jersey in terms of Medicaid and Medicare. Uh, Medicaid is the uh, traditionally county nursing homes have have catered to that clientele. That uh, really we were the home of last resort, where folks had no one at, no one else to go uh, except to the county nursing home. Uh, but uh, the Medicaid dollars. Uh, do not cover the costs. What we're reimbursed through Medicaid really does not cover our costs. So uh, Premier Healthcare, or, which uh, Kathy Engler works for, manages our facility. They have brought that professionalism to our facility and have really changed the payer mix to Medicare, private pay, and uh, private insurance so that uh, we have uh, increased our revenue. Medicare dollars are usually a higher reimbursement rate than the Medicaid. Uh, so we've actually changed the payer mix. We're still taking anyone that, that needs the Medicaid coverage. We'll take them into the facility. But we're also catering the facility to a, a wider audience. 
And that's really shown lately with our, our recent five-star rating at our facility. People are really seeking out Morrisview now uh, as their choice uh, versus uh, the, the home of last resort. So we've really changed the face of, of the nursing home and uh, really would encourage anyone interested in, in um, nursing home care to really consider Morrisview for their, for their loved ones. Yeah, and uh, th toward the end of the program, we'll be giving you uh, the contact information for Morrisview Health Care Center. So uh, if you are looking for this type of facility, you'll be able to reach out to Morrisview. Kathy, I, I want to go back to you. When we talk about subacute care, typically who, uh, who would be in need of uh, subacute care? Um, typically, it's a uh, young adult uh, all the way to a geriatric patient that needs um, hip replacement, knee replacement, coming right out of a hospital um, to, to join our, our unit uh, with, with therapy. Um, typically it's a 20 to 45 day stay and um, we work together with, with the patient and the family. Um, the t it's a team approach and we try and get them home in a safe, to a safe environment um, working with the family and the patient himself. What are the various components of a rehabilitation plan at uh, Marsview? Um, typically when the patient arrives, they, the uh, therapist and the nursing staff do a treatment plan. Um, and we try and get the patient involved as much as we can to, to be a part of that treatment plan. Uh, the care plan works towards the discharge process. Um, each day the, the patient is, is involved in therapy involved in recreational activities, therapeutic activities. Um, we try and mirror their life at home uh, by utilizing a certain occupational therapy room with a small kitchen and a bed um, so that they can practice getting up out of bed into the kitchen, uh, much like they would do at home. Yeah, so it's more than physical therapy. Yes, it's occupational therapy, it's speech therapy. Uh, it's a lot of things that would bring their, their functioning back to optimal level. Yeah. Well, what can you tell us about the staff, uh, especially in the subacute unit and the, uh, the staff, the therapists? What can you tell yeah, us about that? We have a uh, full therapy staff. We have a therapy room uh, dedicated strictly for physical therapy, uh, occupational as well. We have physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists. We have an activities um, therapy aide who also uh, in, is involved in the life of, of all the patients there as well as um, nurses, RNs, LPNs, and um, restorative aides that, that function as certified nursing assistants. Uh, what, uh, what is a restorative? A restorative aid, aid has a lot of practice and a lot of um, training in therapy. So not only, they, not only are they taking care of the resident in terms of helping them with their care, mm -hmm. uh, but they are also helping with their therapy as well. So okay. every day it's, it's more therapeutic to them. Kathy, can you take us through the average day at, uh, in the subacute unit? Mm -hmm. um, patient wakes up uh, at any time they, they choose to. Um, is, so you're not being given, poked and, and prodded like correct. you would be in a hospital? To, yes, okay. yes. Um, and is given breakfast, uh, is helped up by the aides uh, if they need help. We try and foster as much independence as possible so they are, are helped up. Um, each, each, each process of getting dressed is therapeutic actually. Mm -hmm. um, so they're dressed, uh, they get out to therapy right away. Um, they're usually more energetic in the morning. Um, and by then it's lunch and typically they'll, they'll go back to therapy in the afternoon. Okay. What about, our, now I understand that there are private rooms in the subacute yes, unit, is that, is that true? Absolutely, yep. And is that, is that, I don't know if it's unique, but is it rare in subacute it's, units? It's, um, it's not as rare as we would like it to be because we want to be as unique as possible, but we have 15 private rooms. Okay. Uh, each room has a bathroom on their own and um, very well equipped with uh, recessed lighting, not, not too much of the fluorescent. Um, many facilities in the area have private rooms, but not a complete unit of private rooms, and I think that's what makes Morris View uh, unique. It's, yeah. also, it's also a standalone unit separate from the long-term care facility with a separate okay. entrance. And uh, the day room in there is beautiful with uh, views of the skyline of Manhattan. So it's, and that's really where the name Morris View comes from. Yeah, and I think that's important. I mean, the, the, the people in the subacute unit, they're not 
confined to their rooms when they're not in therapy. Right. There is a day room, a reading room, a TV room, mm -hmm. so they can get out uh, and about Absolutely. a beautiful patio mm -hmm. uh, on site, which uh, not only the subacute unit uh, patients use, but the Mars View mm -hmm. uh, patients use uh, as well. Um, now, we talked about form of payment. Uh, Frank, what you mentioned I, I, for Mars View for the long-term care, I assume also holds true for the subacute unit in terms yes. of the forms of payment? It does. Um, in subacute, uh, the, the standard form of payment is Medicare. Okay. Uh, we are working to expand our uh, private insurance coverages uh, to get more in-network with uh, a lot of other insurance companies for both long-term as well as subacute. So we're really starting to expand that, that service to as and to as many people that have insurance coverage as possible. Okay. Kathy, you mentioned when, uh, when we talked about the typical uh, uh, person who would use uh, the subacute unit, uh, young people to geriatrics. When you say young people, what is the age limit, let's say, or, or restrictions? Um, because it's licensed under long-term care, we are unable to take anybody younger than 18. That would be more of a pediatric setting for those people. So we are able to take anyone from 18 upward. And uh, in just another minute, we're going to give you the uh, contact information if someone wanted additional information about Mars View, about the subacute unit. But uh, short of having people themselves call, how do you get the patients in the subacute unit? Are there referrals? Do uh, physicians and uh, other healthcare facilities yes. uh, refer them to you? Actually, we have a uh, RN case manager that visits the hospitals, talks to physicians, networks with other facilities. Um, we partner with a lot of um, assisted living facilities so that when their needs are such that they, they need uh, rehab, they come to Morris View and then they go back to the assisted living. Um, but we do have a lot of good networks out there with physicians and other therapies. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give the uh, contact information. We've been talking about this uh, for the entire program. Uh, the phone number to call if you're interested in finding out more about the subacute unit at Morris View Healthcare Center is 973-285-2800. You may also visit the website. It's morrisview.org. And uh, you can also find out more by visiting the Morris Department of Human Services website at morrishumanservices.org. Kathy Angler, Frank Pinto, I want to thank you very much for being Thanks, with us Joe. today. Thank you, Joe. Now, if you have a question about Morris County government, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office at 973-285-6010. You may also visit the county government's website at morriscountynj.gov. Once you're there, why don't you sign up for Morris Connections, the electronic newsletter that the county government offers. And uh, also feel free, please, to take advantage of the many social media that Morris County has to offer. I'm Joe Garifo. Thank you very much for being with us, but don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm John Pecoraro, surrogate of Morris County. If a loved one passes away and you need to transfer property to their heirs, you must come to the surrogate's court. This is true even if the deceased did not have a will. This process is known as probate. Now, probate in New Jersey is not overly complicated, and my staff is available to assist you. If you have any questions, please call my office at 973 285-6500 or visit our website at morrissurrogate.com. Welcome back to Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo and on this segment of the program we are going to learn about the many services that are provided to Morris County veterans and uh, here to detail some of those services for us are my guests. First to my left is Teresa Davis. Teresa is the director of the Division on Aging Disabilities and Veterans and uh, seated next to Teresa is Charles Jurgensen. Charles is Morris County Veterans Services Officer. Folks, welcome to the program. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Thank you. Teresa, I, I want to start with you. Just if you would give us a brief overview of your division and some of the services that it provides. Okay. Uh, as the name implies, it's Aging, Disabilities, and Veterans. Uh, we have information and assistance. Uh, we have social work staff. We have a nutrition program for people who can come out, as well as the homebound, and we have a, a very vigorous transportation program. Talk a little bit about some of the services uh, that are available for uh, folks with disabilities. 
Are they mainly r referral services? Or we have a lot of uh, information on resources, um, but they also may be coming out to uh, one of the nutrition sites. Um, and we have uh, about half of our transportation is for people with disabilities who need to get to school or work or medical appointments. Charles, generally speaking, what would you say is the mission of your office, the Veterans Services office? Uh, Joe, I would say that our mission is primarily to make the uh, uh, veteran today feel comfortable within the VA system. Uh, our mission is to, is to guide them in the right direction and in, enrolling into those programs. Uh, Teresa mentioned disability. Many of these uh, 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 veterans have disabilities as a result of war injuries and our mission is to a couple with uh, Teresa's uh, division in, in, in assisting them in that process also. Uh, with the advent of uh, the reservists today involved in these conflicts, uh, we're, we're also uh, involved with making the families feel comfortable with uh, services outside the county and even inside the county as to what they can partake of. So we're there to make them feel comfortable, give them the rights that uh, uh, and the programs that they're, they're due. Do we know how many veterans there are in Morris County, Charles? Uh, Joe, in, in checking with the Department of Military Affairs down in Trenton, I'd say around 25,000 in Morris County. Um, you're talking larger amounts in Ocean County, Atlanta County, where there are more veterans. But we're about 25,000. Are these, uh, do they run the gamut in terms of conflicts? Uh, I would imagine from maybe World War II up to today. Is, uh, that is correct. Uh, <clears throat> World War II, uh, Korea, Vietnam, and certainly the current conflict, and also uh, reservists, which we have a lot of at this point uh, uh, as a result of the current Gulf conflict. Yeah. Y you mentioned making them aware of the services mm -hmm. that your office provides and that other offices right. provide for veterans. What are some of those services? What, what do you, you find yourself doing uh, more often than, than not? Well, let's take homelessness, for instance. Um, uh, many veterans uh, today, because of the economy in particular, uh, have come to me with, uh, with homeless issues. So I've got to uh, provide them with services within the VA and also services which are offered uh, uh, through uh, family services, through the uh, mental health associates, uh, groups like that which are outside my purview, but, uh, but in many cases can, can take care of uh, folks which are homeless, uh, l limited on income, uh, and then certainly within the VA system, we have many services. Uh, at Lyons Hospital, we have the domiciliary for uh, folks which are down on their luck. Uh, Community Hope also has an office out there and also other areas within Morris County. Uh, HUD-VASH is a program the VA offers for uh, uh, mentally disturbed uh, veterans uh, and offering them apartments within Morris County. So we're able to offer quite a few services uh, to them within our, within our purview and outside our purview. Yeah. What are some of the other benefits that a veteran who may be coming uh, back from uh, a conflict and who, you know, thank goodness, really does not have serious issues, mm -hmm. what are some of the paperwork type issues that you might help a veteran okay. out with? I'm involved with a lot of paperwork. Uh, <laughs> Uh, mainly with helping them uh, uh, file claims okay. uh, for certain disabilities which could range anywhere from uh, uh, broken fingers, uh, uh, shrapnel wounds, um, broken, broken legs, uh, 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 these types of things, uh, uh, and getting them into uh, compensation uh, mm -hmm. claims. What, educational uh, benefits? Uh, educational they? benefits are also offered to the returning veterans, okay. and, and we have a matter of fact, the, uh, the, those programs today are probably the best since World War II. Uh, Vietnam uh, uh, conflict did not offer very good uh, uh, GI benefits when it came to education, but certainly they do today. Now, wh what about a, a veteran who has been discharged? Uh, they have their discharge papers. Mm -hmm. What should they do with those papers? Do they keep them at home? Is there a safer place for them? To, safer uh, place would be the county. Uh, they can okay. register uh, their, their DD-214 in the county uh, a records office and I would recommend in almost every case they do that and as a matter of fact when they go down there they can also get a veteran ID card uh, which will give them certain discounts within Morris County so okay. we're very pleased with that program also. Teresa, Morris County participates in uh, a program that's called the Veterans Connection Community Living Program. What is that? 
It's a very exciting program that uh, the VA uh, put forward about two years ago. We were one of the first counties to come on board. It is for uh, veterans who are at risk of nursing home placement and giving them uh, support and help in their home that uh, allows them to stay at home and not go into the nursing home. It is also unique in that they can actually hire their neighbor or uh, a grandchild, anyone who they have been helping, has been helping them stay at home. They're able to actually put them on a salary, so to speak. And, and this is a great benefit, I would assume, for a veteran who is able to stay at home and not go to a facility. Yes, and for the VA, uh, they have very few uh, slots open in the nursing home facilities, and this is actually more cost effective to be able to provide those services in their home setting. Uh, Charles, w while we're talking about health, uh, health care, Morris County actually has a veterans clinic, does it not? It does. W what are some of the services that are provided at the clinic? At the clinic, which is in our office at 340 West Hanover Avenue, uh, a VA clinic uh, has uh, a, a doctor, a primary care physician. They've got an, a nurse, two nurse practitioners, a uh, physician's assistant, a uh, psychiatrist, and, uh, and nurses. Uh, they provide primary care for the, for the uh, veteran. Um, they also provide uh, psychiatric care uh, in, uh, in evaluating uh, post-traumatic stress issues. Uh, they will refer uh, a veteran to a higher hospital within the VA system, uh, such as Lyons and mm -hmm. or East Orange, if it's a more complex uh, 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 medical issue. So uh, they'll come in, they can enroll right there into the process. I assist them, by the way, in mm -hmm. doing that. And not all veterans can get into that system, but that's one of the things I've got to assist them in, in trying to provide the guidelines as to whether they can partake or not. But it's a good system. It's a nice system. How, how about uh, participating or uh, uh, going to the clinic, Teresa? Is it only for Morris County veterans? Uh, the clinic is actually operated as an out, uh, outsourcing satellite of Lyons Hospital. So it does serve a wide geographic area. Most of the uh, clinic um, customers are uh, from Morris mm -hmm. or Warren or Sussex, but the vast majority are Morris County. Another thing, Charles, that uh, your office um, is involved with is uh, administering a medals program. Morris County, uh, Morris County Freeholders uh, several years ago uh, decided that they wanted to honor veterans by presenting them with a Morris County Distinguished Military Service Medal. Who is eligible, Charles, to receive this medal? Any veteran who was a former Morris County resident and or current Morris County resident uh, who was in the active military and has been given an honorable discharge uh, is eligible for this uh, particular program. It's been going on, I think, uh, around 10 years, Teresa. Yep. Is, is that uh, my understanding? Uh, I've been with it for the last seven years, mm -hmm. and we've changed it uh, quite a bit uh, since my inception here. Uh, we've given out around uh, 8,900 individual medals, ranging from World War II up to the current conflict of the Gulf War. It does not mean that one has to have been in a conflict. Uh, they could have served during that war period, uh, and therefore they're still eligible. Uh, but what we've done recently in the last three or four years, because we've scaled it back somewhat, uh, is to provide a smaller uh, a group of people. But I've, I've also taken a position I want to get an a biography on each individual and that biography is read uh, every two months at, uh, at your offices up on the uh, freeholders uh, uh, floor uh, for the public to hear and so we're able to uh, bring to the public's attention what the each, each individual uh, veteran has done and, and the press is there so it's turned out to be a real nice uh, nice event yeah now we've really only just scratched the surface here in terms of the services that uh, are provided uh, by the Veteran Services uh, Office and uh, also by the uh, Division on the Aging Disabilities and Veterans. But Teresa, your office and actually the Department of Human Services, I guess, too, uh, puts out this uh, publication. What can you tell us about uh, this? Well, uh, we consider that really the go-to source for all of our uh, services and our uh, partnership with nonprofit providers throughout the county for aging, disabilities, and for veterans. And if someone wanted to uh, pick up a copy of this, uh, I guess there are several ways uh, that they can do it. They can call the office. 
Yes. And it is also online. It's available on the uh, county's Scribd network, which is uh, www.scribd.com slash Morris County NJ. And uh, we have a lot of uh, countywide publications that uh, are on there, including this particular uh, services guide. Um, so Teresa Davis and uh, Charles Jurgensen, I want to thank you both very much for being with us today. Now, if uh, you have a question about county government, perhaps uh, a service that we did not talk about uh, during this segment, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office at 973-285-6010. You may also visit the county government's website at morriscountynj.gov. And when you're there, again, uh, take advantage of the many social media that Morris County's government um, uh, uses in terms of, uh, oh, there's Twitter and there's Facebook and Scribd, as we just mentioned. So uh, make sure that you uh, check those out. I'm Joe Garifo. Thank you very much for being with us. Tune in again next week at this time, won't you, for another edition of Focus on Morris County.